This rectangle centered on the left side of the HUD indicates your airspeed in knots. When your landing gear is raised, your airspeed Mach number is displayed in the top line of text in the lower left corner of the HUD. The bottom line of numbers indicates the amount of G-force being exerted. The aircraft can withstand more G-force than the pilot. Human G-force limits average between minus 3G and plus 9G, depending on pilot training and experience. Your compass heading, the direction in which you are flying, is indicated on the horizontal line across the top of the HUD. This scale is divided every 10 degrees by the large tick marks above the horizontal line. A reading of 12 equals a heading of 120 degrees. A reading of 27 equals a heading of 270 degrees. The heading indicator functions as a normal compass, where 0 equals north and 180 equals south, 90 degrees east and 270 degrees west. The small rectangle centered on the right side of the HUD indicates your altitude in feet. When flying over elevated terrain such as mountain ranges, a radar altimeter automatically displays your above ground level, or AGL altitude, as a second number directly underneath your altitude as measured from sea level. The radar AGL number is marked with an R prefix. Note the radar altimeter functions independent of your main radar system. The master caution lights up when your aircraft has suffered damage. For specific details on what's been damaged, you can either view the caution lights from the rear seat or switch one of the multi-purpose displays to show the damage. The EMIS light illuminates when your aircraft is emitting detectable energy from either your radar or internal jammer. It indicates that enemy forces may be able to detect your plane by using these emissions. The upfront controller consists of four text strips which can be toggled to display fuel and navigational information or primary and secondary target information. You can use the U key to toggle between these two displays. See pages 38 and 39 in the manual for more information on the upfront controller. This light illuminates when an enemy aircraft has fired an air-to-air -air missile at your craft. This light illuminates when a SAM launch is detected by your twos. This light illuminates whenever the automatic pilot is engaged. You can use the P key to activate the automatic pilot. This light illuminates whenever the ground brakes are applied or speed brake extended while in flight. You can activate the brake by pressing the B key. This light illuminates when your landing gear is extended for takeoff and landings. The G key toggles the landing gear. This light illuminates when your internal jammer is activated. This does not mean that it's currently functioning, only that it has been activated. You can use the J key to toggle activation of the jammer. This light is illuminated when running lights are turned on. The Shift L key is used to toggle the running lights. The IFF indicator, identification, friend or foe, lights up if a targeted aircraft responds as a friend when interrogated. Press the I key to send out an IFF interrogation. Only locked targets can be interrogated. See page 62 in the manual for more information. The multi-purpose displays can be configured to display a variety of in-flight information. This display can be configured by pressing the Shift-1 key. See the Displays section of the tutorial for more information on the displays, or look in the manual on pages 43 through 49. The multi-purpose displays can be configured to display a variety of in-flight information. This display can be configured by pressing the Shift-2 key. See the Displays section of the tutorial for more information on the displays, or look in the manual on pages 43 through 49. The multi-purpose color displays can be configured to display a variety of in-flight information. 
This display can be configured by pressing the Shift 3 key. See the Displays section of the tutorial for more information on the displays, or look in the manual on pages 43 through 49. This bank of lights displays the current HUD mode. You can change the master mode by pressing the M key. See pages 41 and 42 in the manual for more information. This bank of lights displays the current this bank of light this bank of lights displays the current HUD mode. You can change the master mode by pressing the M key. See pages 41 and 42 in the manual for more information. Pressing the Shift J key will jettison all of your air to ground ordnance, making your aircraft more nimble in combat. The engine management display allows you to monitor the status of your engines at a glance. See page 40 in the manual for more information. To view the lower instruments while in flight, press the L key. The fuel gauge displays the amount of fuel you have left. When your fuel gets too low, a bingo fuel warning is issued. This light illuminates when an enemy aircraft has fired an air-to-air -air missile at your craft. This light illuminates whenever the automatic pilot is engaged. You can use the P key to activate the automatic pilot. This light illuminates when your landing gear is extended for takeoff and landings. The G key toggles the landing gear. This light illuminates when your internal jammer is activated. This does not mean that it's currently functioning, only that it has been activated. You can use the J key to toggle activation of the jammer. This light illuminates when a SAM launch is detected by your twos. This light illuminates whenever the ground brakes are applied or speed brake extended while in flight. You can activate the brake by pressing the B key. The IFF indicator, identification, friend, or foe, lights up if a targeted aircraft responds as a friend when interrogated. Press the I key to send out an IFF interrogation. Only locked targets can be interrogated. See page 62 in the manual for more information. This light is illuminated when running lights are turned on. The Shift L key is used to toggle the running lights. The master caution lights up when your aircraft has suffered damage. For specific details on what's been damaged, you can either view the caution lights from the rear seat or switch one of the multi-purpose displays to show the damage. This array of lights can be used to see the damage that your F-15 has suffered. For the meanings of each of the 16 lights, see page 37 in the manual. The multi-purpose color displays can be configured to display a variety of in-flight information. This display can be configured by pressing the Shift 4 key. See the Displays section of the tutorial for more information on the displays, or look in the manual on pages 43 through 49. The multi-purpose displays can be configured to display a variety of in-flight information. This display can be configured by pressing the Shift 5 key. See the Displays section of the tutorial for more information on the displays, or look in the manual on pages 43 through 49. The multi-purpose displays can be configured to display a variety of in-flight information. This display can be configured by pressing the Shift 6 key. See the Displays section of the tutorial for more information on the displays, or look in the manual on pages 43 through 49. The multi-purpose color displays can be configured to display a variety of in-flight information. This display can be configured by pressing the Shift 7 key. See the Displays section of the tutorial for more information on the displays, or look in the manual on pages 43 through 49. This bank of lights displays the current HUD mode. You can change the master mode by pressing the M key. See pages 41 and 42 in the manual for more information. The radar display gives you a look at the targets in front of your aircraft. See pages 58 and 59 in the manual for details. The real beam map is generated by the F-15's radar and is used to generate high-resolution map displays for pinpointing targets. 
See pages 62 and 63 in the manual for additional information. The high-resolution map display is generated by data acquired from the radar system and can be used to designate targets. See page 64 in the manual for details on how to generate and use a high-resolution map. The air-to-ground display shows your bomb layout by type and number. As bombs are dropped, the amount of remaining ordnance is displayed. Fuel tanks appear as fuel on the centerline station. The horizontal situation indicator gives your aircraft's current heading and is used as part of the instrument landing system. See page 46 in the manual for additional details. The tactical situation display is a color map that shows the terrain around your aircraft and any known enemy positions. See pages 45 and 46 in the manual for information on the color coding of enemy planes and SAM sites. The Tactical Electronic Warfare System allows you to quickly see the tactical situation surrounding your aircraft. See pages 57 and 58 in the manual for additional information on the twos. The forward-looking infrared is used to acquire and mark targets for destruction using a laser designator. See pages 65 and 66 in the manual for more information. The HUD repeater gives the weapons officer the ability to see what's going on in the pilot's HUD. Certain visual cues appearing on the HUD are duplicated. This simplified HUD is superimposed on the NAV FLIR display. The air-to-air -air armament display shows the location of each air-to-air -air missile that you're carrying. See page 47 in the manual for more explanation. This display gives you a full text listing of all areas currently damaged and inoperable. See pages 101 through 103 in the Authentic Mode section of the manual for more information on aircraft systems. The Attitude Director Indicator gives the pilot an artificial horizon to use at night or during instrument landings. See page 47 in the manual for a full explanation of this display.